All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Ian. Uh, I'm a partnerships coordinator at Kialo EDU, also a recovering English teacher. Uh, we're one of the certified integrations here at Moodle Moot, so we're really happy to be here with all of you, and I'm so happy to see so many people in this room. I was not quite expecting this, especially for a presentation on more engaging, inclusive class discussions using digital argument mapping. It's kind of a deep cut, so kudos to all of you for being here, and because we've got some stuff to get through, Let's just dive right in, shall we? So first up, we all know that class discussions are really fantastic learning activities for a variety of reasons. They're really great at teaching students critical thinking skills, they're wonderful for uh, building communication skills, and they're excellent for involving students in their own learning. But that said, we know that they're not the easiest activity for a lot of students. Back when I was in school, I really loved class discussions. But then again, I'm also the kind of person who genuinely enjoys giving presentations, so we know that that's not everybody. And it really is a shame when really capable, talented students kind of stay on the edge of a discussion, not really participating. It's all too common. I saw it a lot back when I was in school. I definitely saw it when I was a teacher. And today's students, of course, also do a lot of discussion activities online, which presents its own set of issues. So. What are some of these problems for engagement and inclusivity in class discussions? When it comes to traditional oral discussions, one of the main ones is that shy students often have to compete with more confident students. It's really easy for a confident, charismatic student to raise their hand, assert themselves, and say what they think, but it can be very difficult for a shyer student to follow that. Another thing that many students find frustrating is they can't always respond to everything that they would like to in a class discussion. Because in an oral discussion, only one student can speak at a time, it can take a long time for a teacher to get around to calling on student A, who would really like to respond to something that student B said, you know, like five minutes ago, and the discussion moves on, and it's kind of awkward. And of course, there are many students who have difficulties with public speaking, especially in front of their peers. Moving to online discussions, one big issue is that a lot of times, the quality is just not that great. You can have a lot of posts in online discussion forums where students just seem to be writing for themselves, not really responding to anything else that's been said in the discussion, it can be a bit rambling. On the other end of that continuum, you have some posts that are the opposite of rambling, and it can be just like, yeah, I agree. In either case, the quality is not exactly there. Another issue with forums is they can be very difficult to follow. Say there's a student that really does want to respond to something that one of their peers has said, but that first remark could be halfway up the page. There could be a whole lot of text in between two related ideas, which makes it difficult for students to really engage with the discussion. And let's face it, those online forums can be kind of boring for today's students. They've grown up with a bunch of flashy technology and a forum that looks like it's from 2008, you know, like when they were born. It's maybe not the most engaging thing. And in all kinds of discussions, a very common issue is that students are afraid of being judged by their peers for what they say. So, with all of these issues in mind, what can we do to relieve these barriers without compromising on what we know is an excellent classroom activity? Well, maybe try argument mapping. When I'm out in the wild and somebody asks me what I do for a living, there is usually some form of the question, what is argument mapping? I think I have some practice explaining this, but this time I have a PowerPoint, so check it out. Argument mapping is a digital tool for visually structured argumentation, where you can really see the logic of an argument. The way that that works is by starting with a central proposition for debate, something that is somehow debatable, like does pineapple belong on pizza? So, as you can see, argument mapping is suitable for even the most provocative topics. And, responding to that central proposition, you can add arguments and counter-arguments. To these, you can add further supporting arguments and further counter-arguments, and so on and so forth. And you get to see how the whole thing logically flows. Now, what's really cool is that Moodle has a dedicated argument mapping plugin. And that is Kialo Discussion. The Kialo Moodle plugin is completely free, and 
it's really great um, for giving students an intuitive, simplified version of argument mapping, which also stands to boost engagement and inclusivity in your class discussions. So that's a lot to unpack. First, let's see what we mean by simplified argument mapping. Like in all argument maps, a Kialo discussion starts with a central thesis. Students can add prose to support that central thesis, and they can also add cons to weaken that argument. Simple so far. A really cool part is that each one of these pros and cons can then go on to have its own set of pros and cons. On down the line, so that students are able to both justify their own reasoning and challenge each other's reasoning at any step in this logical chain of argumentation. The result is that you get this visual map of the entire discussion. That blue circle in the center, that's the central thesis. I'm gonna come down here. Here would be a pro to that thesis. Here are the pros and cons to that pro, and so on and so forth. So, in addition to all of the benefits for engagement and inclusivity that you get with an argument map, which we're gonna get to in just a second, I promise, students can also really see how all of the ideas in a discussion are connected. So it's great for their topic comprehension as well. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, how can argument maps actually alleviate some of these barriers to engagement and inclusivity? Well, let's go back to some of those barriers that we talked about at the start of the presentation. When it comes to that mix of shy versus more confident students, a really key benefit of argument mapping is that contributions are simultaneous. This means that everybody can participate at the same time, and shyer students do not have to compete with more confident students to hold the floor. Students also don't have to get frustrated with not being able to respond to everything that they want to in a discussion. That's because argument maps, at their heart, are asynchronous. So, as long as the discussion is open, students can respond to any claim within that argument map when they like. And for the students who have trouble with public speaking, with an argument map, there is simply no need to. Everything is completely written out, which is a very comfortable format for many of today's students, who, some of whom seem to uh, have an intrinsic enjoyment for just typing on screens. And moving to online discussions, argument maps can help to alleviate that issue of little quality interaction. That's because students, uh, the argument maps prompt students to break down their ideas, one idea at a time, and to respond directly to their peers' ideas. So just like when you get a comment on social media and you get that little hit of dopamine, when students get a direct response to one of their ideas, it can really help their engagement. And when it comes to making uh, discussions that are easier to follow, that one idea at a time format is also very useful because you can see clearly and visually how all the ideas connect to one another. This makes the discussion much more approachable and therefore more engaging for your students. And when it comes to the layout of the forum itself, um, compared to those online forums, argument maps can really spice things up a bit. Posting in a forum is oftentimes like putting another brick in the wall of text. But when students are building out an argument map, they get that interesting visual feedback of creating something, building it out. And because students are building on each other's claims, they can get a sense of social engagement as uh, they're collaborating to build out that map. And when it comes to that ever-present fear of judgment from their peers, the Kiala Discussion plugin has a very unique solution, and that is colorful animals. You can have an anonymous discussion mode in, Kiala, in the Kiala Discussion plugin, which assigns students these colorful animal avatars, which they use in place of their names. So students are completely anonymous to one another, and hopefully making them feel freer to actually say what they think. Of course, the teacher can always see who's who, so there's that very important layer of accountability. And there you have it. Argument maps are an excellent solution for alleviating some of the most common barriers to engagement and inclusivity in class discussions. And 
Moodle has its very own dedicated argument mapping plugin in the form of Kialo discussion. So, all that said, thank you all very much for coming, and I wish you happy discussing. Wonderful. Um, is there any questions for Ian? Oh, yeah, we got one back there. Hi, and um, thank you. I have a uh, preoccupation, if I can say that. We can say, uh, taking the judgment uh, from the equation of uh, uh, debating forums, is there any um, kind of modeling tool inside of Kialo, knowing that our youth can be a little harsh, for example, in our social media, and kind of behave the same way in a forum like this? Is there any mediation about that, if they kind of can get a little bullying or aggressive in that kind of way? Mm. That's a very good question. Um, in fact, it's interesting because the original idea behind Kialo was to offer an alternative to that often toxic nature that you see in online discussions. Yeah. Uh, there will always, at least we're assuming in this scenario, there's gonna be a teacher here as well, you know, to kind of make sure that students are behaving themselves, not bullying too much. And also one of the rationales behind that anonymous discussion mode that I was discussing earlier is that students, because they cannot see who one another are, are then responding to ideas rather than people. So hopefully that would cut down on bullying um, and, you know, ganging up on somebody. Uh, in terms of making sure that the arguments themselves are, you know, not abusive, um, that would just be a, a job for the teacher to make sure that the classroom climate is properly moderated. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, got another one. Um, do you know of any use cases where it's used to actually teach writing? Very good idea. In fact, yes. Um, one, of the, one of the applications of Kialo is that you could use it um, with individual students to outline their ideas for an essay. So instead of that traditional, really linear outline, students could put all of the different arguments that they can think of for, say, a persuasive essay into one of these Kialo discussions and work from that. Thank you, very interesting. Could you use it for uh, class debates in which you create pro-teams and con-teams so that you assign the specific roles to a particular team or group of students? Absolutely. Yeah, um, our company is made of a bunch of former debaters. <laughs> so this is actually one of the primary use cases that we've thought of. Students usually are free to just take whatever side they like, pros or cons, but as part of the setup of a classroom activity, it could be very possible for a teacher to assign students a certain role within the discussion. 